Hello everyone, my name is Emily Golia. I am an actor, singer, and creator here in Los Angeles, and I am so excited to be here with comedian Travis Spencer. How's it going, Travis? It's going good. How about yourself? It's so good. I'm so glad we've connected. Travis is in Maryland. I'm in Los Angeles. The powers of Zoom are just incredible. Yes, it is. Yes. Okay, so tell me, Travis, you have been doing comedy now for 23 years. Yes. How, okay, let's start at the beginning. Where were you born? And then where, born. okay, yes, go. Where were you born? I was, I was born in um, Alexandria, Virginia, 1971. Okay. March 28th, yes. Oh, I'm March 30th. Hey, all right, Aries in the house. Yeah, that's great. That's why we got Awesome personality. Fantastic. Yes. Um, okay, so you're born in Virginia. When was the moment that you realized you were like, good at comedy you were making people laugh that would be in elementary school junior high high school like i've been funny all my life so yeah. everyone that knows me like travis uh you're a natural at it so <laughs> i didn't really realize that um i was funny in, until i got to college really so you mm -hmm. you were just like being yourself and then you were like Wait a second. So then when was the moment that you realized this was your career, that this was the path that you needed to take? I always smile at this question. Um, I knew, well, I didn't know then, uh, the station managers. I went to school in Tennessee, Rome State Community College in the house. Um, so after I graduated from Rome State, um, I realized that um, I didn't really graduate. Um, so I had to graduate two times. I didn't know that I was on a um, uh, developmental studies in college. I didn't know they had special ed in college. So um, once I got on college level, I was able to get my degree. So oh, once I got my degree, um, I was staying down there in those years and became a meteorologist for the local town in Harriman, our own county oh. community. So did a lot for the community. And as I became a weatherman, a meteorologist, um, of course I wasn't getting paid. Um, the reason why I wasn't getting paid because um, Mike Winters and Bill Sellis, they were the station managers and um, Mike, one of, it was three mics. One of the mics was, was doing the weather. So he fell ill and they weren't gonna do the weather for a week. And I was doing the camera work for my man, Sean Renfro, who was in my class. So once I started doing the camera work, I was in the building. So yeah. once I heard that they wasn't doing the weather for a week, I said, I'll volunteer to do it. So yeah. they, were, they were like, you don't know anything about it. I said, I have a science degree, X, Y, and Z. And I go learn from the guy that was just doing the weather. So he gave me a crash course. Um, I started doing the weather. And during that week, the phone line started ringing. So they were like, uh, who's this guy doing the weather? He's making the weather funny. So um, oh after, after a month, um, so it started off with a week and then they, they hired me for the, well, asked me if I could continue volunteer for the rest of the month. So I was like, yes. So they came up with a bright idea to go to Cotton Eye Joe's. Now, Cotton Eye Joe's is the most redneck place in Knoxville, Tennessee. I mean, they they, they teach about the boot scoot. Um, it's not too many black people in there. Yeah. Right. So they used to go up there every Wednesday for a comedy show and then they, they had a party after the fact. So they come to me with a bright idea and said, Travis, we can't pay you just yet, but we have a way to get you some money. So I was like, what's up? And it was like, they have a comedy competition in Knoxville, Tennessee at Cotton Eye Joe's. And I was like, whoa, 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 Cotton Eye Joe's, you know? And they were like, yeah. So I, they talked me into going up there. And then they told me that the grand prize for the night was $500 for the winner. So I didn't have no material, anything. And I asked them, what should I talk about? And they was just like, just talk about your day and how you went to the weather, uh, got into weather and how you met us. And that should pretty much do it, Travis. And, and how we led to right now, how we couldn't pay you. So, and it went, they went bananas in the club. So really? I got the roar. Yeah, I got the roar, the pats on the back, the, you know, the big eyes. And they gave me that money that night. 
Yes. And they were help yes, they were holding the competition every Wednesday. So for eight weeks, I went up there with Mike Winters and Mike Sellers and, and won that money. And then when oh, I came so home. <laughs> oh no, every other comedian in that building was like, oh man, Travis is back. Oh. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So they stopped giving out the prize after I racked it up so many times. So when I came home to um, Virginia, I said, that's what I'm going to do. So I just set my path out since I came home from school um, and told uh, my mom, who was a big believer in my dreams and, and encouraged me to live my dreams. So I've stuck with it through the ups and downs. And after 23 years, here we are. That is incredible. I love that. Yes. That is just, that's amazing for eight weeks in a row you were like yeah yes I was coming back like <laughs> yeah yeah yep. I'm obsessed with that so then what what so okay let's see how was like the pandemic for you I mean like how did you stay creatively fulfilled with you know everything that was going on like were you able to and what do you have any advice for those out there the pandemic was horrible for every stand-up comedian. Yeah. And, I mean, money stopped. Let's right. be honest. It's in, um, it's in person. Like, yes. Either, you are a live performance. Yes. Yeah. And I saw Zoom, um, people advertising for Zoom and things like that. Um, that was not my cup of tea because, like you said, we're in person. Yeah. The Blessing in the pandemic for me came through my documentary that aired the day Kobe Bryant and uh, the people whose daughter were in that accident. Mm -hmm. I had a documentary that aired on um, the Discovery Channel. Oh and it's God. called um, My Brother Made History. So as the um, documentary was airing, um, I received so much love from people all around the world um, in support of what I spoke upon in that documentary. So during that pandemic, it was more of a, um, people were sitting home and I felt like the Lord was working in such a, a, a blessing in my favor that you had to watch TV. So it gave people time to surf the t channels and really? find, find me on there and yeah. reach out and say how my story was inspirational impactful in their life and I was so appreciative of that and for Red Marble reaching out to me and wanting to do my story it was so impactful that my mom and I actually you know came out of a, a huge depression after that I mean it was like so much burden had been lifted um, during a pandemic because I wanted the world to know that my mom was a great mom, like everyone, everyone's mom. Um, I wanted the world to know that she loved her son no matter what, and she did whatever she could to um, prevent those situations. And she instilled in me to create ways to um, bring income in during the pandemic. So I was out doing construction, hanging shades with my man, Mo, and um, I was on a job site and I was hanging a shade up and this gentleman came up to me and said, Trap Spencer. And I looked, cause I did not know this man from two cans of four cans of paint <laughs> with no labels. <laughs> so, I looked and he said, I just saw your documentary. And he was standing there with tears. And he was like, what the hell are you doing here? And I was like, it's a pandemic, man. And he said, your story touched my life in such a way that I I showed it to my wife and she, she does work with at-risk youth. And she shows it to her classmates, you know, her, her class and they write essays. And, you know, so I was able to go in there and speak to her class and shake those hands that saw the documentary and, and saw the impact in their life during the pandemic. And I just thought that that was so beautiful and such a blessing. And my mom and I 
bonded so much during the pandemic that um, it was just such a blessing to have that airing and, you know, in a time that nobody was really working. Yeah. Family so, is so important. Oh my gosh. That was such a beautiful yeah. story. Thank you for sharing that. Yes. And thank it was you. Just like such an in, insanely terrible time. So like those little moments are so yes. important to yes. have on to and, and keep with us, you know, because that's how we keep going. That's yes. Like being recognized. That's amazing. And like knowing that your story touched so many people. Yes. Like that must be, that must just feel incredible. Yes. And for my mom to witness that and, and experience that love yeah. was just, she was just overwhelmed with so much joy and tears. And those were tears of joy. So, um, and the words that she said were, Travis, I'm proud of you. You did a good job. And I was so fortunate to have that happen. So. I'm very blessed. I'm very happy to be here. Yes, that is that is amazing. Wow. Oh, thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Absolutely. And I'm so excited that you're going to be here on the Phoenix platform with us. It's going to be an amazing way to get people, more people to hear your story and more people to connect with you and for you to connect with your fans and yes, dream, yes. dream some comedy, put up your, some comedy videos and, and let everyone know when your shows are. And yes, hopefully yes. there'll be a lot coming soon now that everything is kind of lifting. Yes, yes, yes. It's picking up slowly, but surely. So yeah, no really complaints. Good. Right. Yes, absolutely. And I have, it was just so wonderful to meet with you and talk with you and hear your journey. That's it's, you're amazing. I'm so happy for you. Thank you. I'm Thank so you. happy that you're, you're here. I can't wait to see what's next. Uh, I'm just leaving it up to the Lord. He, he yes. got my footsteps. Love that. I love that. Well, you have a wonderful day and um, you we'll see you soon. All right. Thank you, Emily. Bye. Bye.